In this video, we are going to rediscuss a topic which I have talked about before, which is the long wick inefficiency and how you can use the long wick inefficiency along with uh, ICT's other trading models to uh, enter trades to take to, to get trade ideas. Uh, guys, you can find all of my referral links in the description box below, including a referral link to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, uh, TradingView, these beautiful charts that you see in front of you. I have a, an affiliate uh, link with TradingView. I think if you sign up for a TradingView premium charting package uh, using my referral link, I think TradingView will give you a $15 credit. Um, in addition to that, guys, you can find the American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card referral link in the description box below. I highly recommend the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. Okay, guys, uh, other than the referral links, let's get into the meat of today's video, which is going to be the long wick inefficiency. So the long wick inefficiency is one of ICT's uh, inefficiency models and it's one that I like quite a bit. You can actually see that I have an order pending based on a long wick inefficiency. So the first, uh, the first task is to identify what is a long wick. So a wick, remember, is this portion of a candle that does not include the body of the candle. So in other words, um, if the body of the candle is the open and the close, whether bullish or bearish, the wick is uh, that part of the price during that set time period in, in which the market traded but, but did not open or close. The long wick inefficiency is usually but not always found at the end of the move. And ideally what you're looking for is a wick that is makes up about 75% or 80% plus of the candle. So if you look at the entire candle, you're looking for a candle where the wick, that means the, the part of the candle that is not including the candle body, uh, is 75%, three-fourths or more. These are usually found at the end of a, of a leg or a move, but they can be found in the middle of a move as well. So the first thing to do when identifying a long wick is to start, uh, we'll start, let's, let's see if we can find any on the daily time frame. Let's try and find candles where the wick of the candle is about three-fourths or more of the total, the total candle. So let's take our highlighter tool and here on the daily chart I'm going to show you some examples of candles that have long wick inefficiencies. So here, 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 and here. Okay guys, so the long wick inefficiency shows you where price has been inefficient, similar to a fair value gap or uh, regular trading hours gaps or other ICT inefficiencies. And how, you, how I like to use, and, and this is also how ICT talks about it, is to go to our FIB tool and let's get down to the hourly chart and show you some examples. So this would have been a long wick inefficiency here. And what you want to do is take your FIB tool with the same settings that you can see that I have, a, I have applied here, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75, in other words, into quarters. And a pretty decent idea is to place a limit order on a long wick inefficiency at the 50% or the 75% retracement of the long wick, okay? So using our hourly chart, let's pretty quickly show you some examples of where a long wick inefficiency would have made uh, a decent trading idea. So here was a long wick inefficiency and the candle, uh, if you entered in a limit order, you wouldn't have been filled. You needed to put that order right there. Uh, here was another example of a long wick inefficiency. So. Real time, let's say for example that you're sitting, this requires some imagination, so you, you bear with me. But let's say that you're watching the market, and this is an hourly time frame, so you can see at the top left of my screen that we have it set to one hour, and we're down on the electronic trading hours on the bottom right. So looking at the candle here that was formed on Wednesday the 3rd of January at 1400, we can see that this candle, or at least the upper portion of it, greater than 75% of this hour's trading is made up of the wick. 
So using that information, you know you have a long wick inefficiency here, and had you play, placed a limit short order at 50% of that retracement, the high there was exactly at the 50% of this long wick inefficiency. Okay, let's see if we can find some other examples using the Fib tool. Didn't quite reach it there. Some other long wicks here. This would have reached just shy of the, uh, just shy, like one tick shy of the long wick inefficiency. You could have potentially placed a short order, uh, placed a short order at 47.58 quarters, which would have been the 25% point of this long wick inefficiency. See some other examples. The long wick inefficiency here on this candle would have gotten you into a position here long. And the long wick inefficiency here would have uh, gotten you into gotten you into a position as well. Um, some here are some basic tips when using a long wick inefficiency. Although the long wick inefficiency can work on a second or a third retest of that level, my advice and my recommendation to you when placing your limits based on a long wick inefficiency is to look for the first touch, meaning the first time that the market comes back to that long wick inefficiency. Look for a first touch trade. Number two, you should pair the long wick inefficiency with other ICT patterns like the rejection block. Ideally, your long wick inefficiency should be somewhere at the upper end or the lower boundary of a leg. What do I mean by a leg? Simply a, a clearly defined move up or down. Okay, so for example, here's our leg from point A to point B. And when the market came back down to this level, you had multiple ICT patterns which could have gotten you in. So just to give you uh, some examples of ICT patterns that could have gotten you in on a limit long. Number one, ICT rejection block. Number two, ICT long wick. So we can see that either way the market came down and tested the rejection block as well as this long wick inefficiency. Either way, you would have had an excellent trade. Uh, you would have had a little bit of a more advantageous trade on the rejection block, uh, but also using a long wick inefficiency. So we're always looking for what's called confluence. What is confluence? Confluence is where you have multiple models that are sort of indicating to you that the market should turn around at a given price point if the market makes it there. So if you have a rejection block, a long wick inefficiency, maybe a fair value gap, all sort of at the same price level, or in and around the same price level, that's a, that gives you a pretty strong confluence to put a limit order and see if you can get a trade at that, at that spot. So looking back at our chart, guys, the long wick inefficiency does not necessarily have to be used just in that straightforward way. You can use it in the future as well. So for example, we had a long wick inefficiency here and uh, if you were watching the market, it nearly came back up in this instance to that long wick inefficiency. So again, uh, you know, in this instance, the market stopped at that fair value gap, but you would have been reasonable, you know, within a reasonable number of points had you placed a limit order back on this long wick inefficiency. So guys, these are not things uh, that should be used alone. You should be using what's called confluence. That is multiple models that are indicating the same price point or kind of around the same price point for you to base your entry on or your exit. So let's see if we can find another example of a long wick inefficiency. So here we had a long wick inefficiency and you can see that a couple of different trading opportunities Number one, the 25% of that long wick inefficiency would have been an excellent entry. It was also a fair value gap. Okay, now the market ended up trading momentarily much lower to this rejection block, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that you still would have had a, a profitable trade had you just looked at that long wick inefficiency. Okay, some other examples. Let's see if we can find some other examples of long wick inefficiencies. We have one here. 
Okay, so there we have a 50% retracement. That would have been an excellent long entry. So you had a few hours, one, two, three hours on that third hour. Had you placed a limit order at 74 halves prior to the market coming back down, you would have been uh, filled and for an excellent trade. So the long wick inefficiency worked out there. So you can see that the long wick inefficiency as I've been trying to emphasize in this video, is not something to be used in and of itself, but something to be used as confluence. Finally, guys, I want to talk about guessing where the market is going to go to go in the future by trading through an inefficiency. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, we look up here, let's go to a big, a big time frame. All right, I wanted to, to show you guys this. Guys, this is the current uh, let's go to a two-week chart. Okay, this is the micro ES on a two-week chart. This uh, is a very unique candle. So if I were to show you, um, if I were to show you all of the candles on the S and P 500 on a two-week on a two-week basis, that sort of hammer candle with a long wick inefficiency is one of your rarer, it's a very rare um, candle. And it tells you something, it's, it's signaling to you something. So if we look, and I understand that a lot of this requires sort of guesswork and familiarity with, with looking at price charts. And guys, there's no other way to put this except you're just gonna have to look at price charts day in and day out, month, week in and week out, over and over and over again. And, and eventually you'll get a feel for uh, candles that are not exactly normal. So again, taking our blue highlighted candle and comparing it with other candles that I have here in the yellow box, you can see that most candles, not all of them, but most candles, the body of the candle makes up the, the majority of the, of the candle. So what do I mean by that? From where the market opened to where the market closed for that time period, in this case two weeks, the open to the close represents the majority of the trading action. When it does not represent the majority of the trading action and you're left with these long wicks, it signals to you that the market was inefficient for that period of time. And when you use that in greater context, such as, for example, if we're trading up near all-time highs or above all-time highs and we have a long wick inefficiency on the two-week chart, remember that price likes to trade to and through inefficient price points. In other words, kind of like ICT talks about the paint roller, when you have this long two-week uh, candle wick, it's indicating you, okay, the market's probably going to have a, uh, an easier time than usual. It's going to have an easy time uh, trading back through that candle because it was an inefficient price delivery. If you don't know what inefficient price delivery means, if inefficient price delivery doesn't mean anything to you, I recommend that you watch my playlist and you're going to have to go do some in-depth study on ICT's videos as well about inefficient price delivery. Uh, if you are familiar with what inefficient price delivery is, I want to take your attention to the two-week candle from uh, Tuesday, the 2nd of January of 2024. So starting out our year, that is a very long wick okay? that traded into a prior fair value gap. And if you know anything about ICT's style of trading and about his understanding of the market, that would highly indicate to you that you should be leaning on the short side, that the market should be trading through this inefficient price delivery and, and trade lower. Okay, so again, you can find these long wicks on any time frame, all the way from daily time frames to intraday time frames. Um, finally, guys, let me see if I can find you some long wicks using the regular trading hours. So guys, we're always looking for trading ideas, always. Okay, uh, you know, we're looking for something that gives us an idea of where we should place our orders, whether it's our entry or our exit, but, but especially the entry. So looking at our regular trading hours, let's go down to a 10 minute chart. And these are on our regular trading hours. If my chart will load, and if not, then I guess we won't be looking at it. Okay, long wick inefficiencies on the 10 minute regular trading hours chart. Here we had one, 
Here we had one. Here we had one. We had one here. Had one here. And so, uh, how could you have used this information for some trades? Okay, so if we're on the 10 minute regular trading hours chart, there we can see you had an opportunity to take a short. So long wick inefficiency on that candle, you could have entered in a short at the 50% or the 25% at 4801 evens and that would have profited you on a short. Our second long wick inefficiency, which was here. Okay, your first pass up through that long wick inefficiency, you can see that the market simply traded up and through it, which ICT talks about, that's sort of the standard behavior. But how could you have used that information to get back long? Okay. We can see that the 50% point or 48.10 halves would have made you a profitable trade had you placed a limit order for the way back down. In other words, if you had placed a long at 48.10 halves, uh, that would have netted you a profit. And you can also see, guys, here that we had another long wicked candle that the market came back to. So, in other words, guys, you're not just looking at long wicks for the first pass, but you might be looking at looking at it for the second or the third pass if you have confluence. So I know that that was about as clear as mud. Okay, um, other examples of long wicks. We had one here. That trade didn't work out. Had one down here. The market never came back to it. Again, guys, these are not perfect. Here we have a long wick inefficiency that uh, you could have taken a trade on. You would have been in some drawdown, but then it would have been profitable. Here we had a long wick inefficiency that the market didn't quite get to. Got close, though. So what I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys is this is really an art, not necessarily a science. This is a technical, I mean, ICT calls it a technical science, but uh, irregardless of that, guys, this is my video covering the long wick inefficiency. The long wick inefficiency should be used in conjunction with other patterns such as rejection blocks, order blocks, um, regular trading hours, and other uh, indications that the market should turn around at, at that price point or near that price point. Okay, guys. Finally, the 50% the point of a long wick inefficiency is referred to as the consequent encroachment. So, for example, let's take a long wick, which would have been here. The 50% point of that is referred to as the consequent encroachment. In other words, the consequent encroachment of a wick. All right, back to our electronic trading hours. And things are not loading too fast for me tonight. Okay, guys. Um, long wicks. You can see one where my cursor is. Um, for example, let's take that long wick there. Cut through candles. Would have given you a good short there. So ICT would call that cutting through candles, guys. You cannot just look at the market always as the first pass or the second pass. Ideally, you want to get trades in on the first touch of patterns, but that's not the way that ICT trades exclusively. You also need to look to cut through candles. So, for example, as I'm showing you with this drawing, if you had a long wick inefficiency and the market had cut through it on the first pass, as it comes back up on the second pass, which was here, you can use that information as confluence for, say, an order block right there or a fair value gap here to place your short order right right where the market turned. So don't be afraid to cut through candles. Okay, guys, this is uh, my video re recapping uh, long wick inefficiencies. It is Monday, January the 5th, 2024. I will be covering this topic again in a future video. Um, you can find my other video on long wick inefficiencies in my ICT playlist. You can find more about uh, long wick inefficiencies on ICT's YouTube. Finally, guys, please use my referral, referral links in the description box below. They really help me out, um, especially that American Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card. That brings you a lot of benefit as well. Okay, guys, referral links to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, Trading View Charts, and American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Cards are in the description box below. Best of luck in your trading, guys. And this has been my video recapping the long wick inefficiency yet again. And we will do it in the future.
Okay, guys. Bye-bye.